Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to show you something that's really cool and also very useful. You may be familiar with our parking tool object that allows you to create banks of parking and keep extending, adding numbers, automatically numbers the elements and you can very easily switch between the different types of parking bays using these clever hotspots. We've also added the new ability to now curve this element. That's pretty cool but that's not really what we're excited about. It's nice, but what's even nicer is having this whole element in a parking matrix. So these four elements are a single object. So let's have a quick look at how it works. There's a really cool functionality where you can continue to add and modify your parking design on the fly and it still stays up to date with the correct numbering and sequencing. Okay, so this is the default settings and I probably should have started without the curve in this one. Okay, so you can see that we've got our four banks of parking bays. Each of these bays moves independently. So the origin of this point is actually here. So the origin of the whole object. So if I move that off the origin, you'll see this is the origin of the object. So if I move this element, then I'm moving the whole matrix. However, I can move each bank of parking bays independently. I can also rotate these elements. So there's another node here. It allows you to rotate the elements around. And obviously they all have their own curving function as well. Bring this element back around a little bit more. So you could very easily do the scenario where you have uh, one row of bays on one side and then you flip your next element over and you have your next row of bays following on from that. You can also then add more bays to this element. Let's just grab this node here and keep adding, adding a couple more bays. You can then also use all the other functions that you saw in the standard object where you can nominate what type of bays these are. So you can see we can set these to disabled as well on this side. And then we could even on the fly we could come in, make sure we grab the right node. And we could curve these elements. This is getting a bit tricky. But as you can see, you could create a, a fairly complex matrix of bays. All these elements are still connected. This is obviously not a very good design, but you can see how this works. Now you see each element is numbered as well, so we can control the 2D representation. This is just to allow you to know the sequence of events. So it's the counting of these elements. So it counts up to bay 10 and then 11 in two, and then it goes to 20, and then we go across to bay three, and we start at 21 and so on. So now when you want to add more banks, you've got to choose where you want to insert it. So do you want to insert the numbering in between bays two, two and three or bay three and four or after bay four or so on? So let me show you how that works. If I come to bay four and I grab this handy little node up here, which is the node we use to add another bay, click that. You see I've now got another bay and I can move that across here and it's bay 5. So it's counting starts at the end of bay 4. Okay, if we wanted to insert one between 3 and 4 based on the numbering, then we would select that node on bay 3. Now remember this has been rotated and curved so it's kind of a little difficult to see which one of these nodes is the right node, but this is the node here. So if I grab that, I'm now adding another bay and I click that and it becomes bay four and starts its counting at the end of the bay three count. And then it increases obviously the subsequent bays. So in that way, you can really create any arrangement you want and very easily be adding banks of, of parking bays in between other ones and modifying it and have the count really well controlled. Um, it's not just a matter of counting what you've got, you can control the sequence of the numbering across your parking design. Okay, let's have a look at the next cool thing. So we've got all these bays down here, we've also got some in the next story up. So let's go into the schedule and see how this works.
So you can see we've got two objects placed here. We've got one on the ground floor and we've got one on the first story. So we've got a value here starting at, okay? So that's where the count of the bays starts at for that element. Here we've got the total number of bays. So these are all values coming straight out of the object. So we've got on the ground floor, we've got 52 bays, 48 of them are standard, four are disabled and zero for the rest. On the story above, we've got 34, 27, 5, 2, and 0. So that's pretty easy to understand. Now, as we know that we have 52 bays here, then we can nominate to start the counting of the story above at 53. So now, when we go back to our 2D, and we can see this one counts from 1 all the way up to 52. And if we go up one story to where our other bays are, we can see this one starts at 53 and goes to 86. So that way you can actually use the schedule to QA and control the counting of your parking bays. So that's the bay numbers that are actually on the marking and also um, you get the counting of how many different types of bays so you can really check to see if you're meeting the requirements of that design. Oh, the other thing was also, we want to show how to get rid of these numbers because obviously you don't want to print out design with these numbers. So you just go straight into the object, go to all parameters and turn the 2D guides to component. I should put that value in here somewhere. Click OK. And now we have eliminated those elements so you can publish these documents. Okay, we hope you're as equally impressed with the functionality of this tool as we are. It, it's quite a simple thing. It's more a clever trick than something highly intelligent, but it's a lot of fun and it will definitely give you an advantage when you're numbering and QAing your parking design. Thank you for watching.